thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be making a set of Crackle Dragon Skin Coasters. Um, this is one of my favorite designs to do. If you've watched my channel, you've seen me do a few different color combinations, and today I'm going to try black and white. <laughs> um, I, I've done some with black and copper, and they, they ended up turning more of a silver color. Um, so it's still beautiful, but I want to do, I want to try and go for just black, but with still the crackle texture. So what I've got here, I'm going to try, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I've got, um, going to use the eye candy Yoro, Yoru black mica powder, the let's resin in silver. This is a mica powder, the mix all black. And then some cast and craft white. Now, I don't know if having the white in there is going to give this that gray silver tint again. I'm really hoping it's it's a nice black. Um, so that's why I have two blacks. I'm hoping that's that's what we get. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, oops, and I got these switched around. So I mixed up 12 ounces of resin for four coasters. And I already have the resin divided up, so I'm gonna do two ounces with the black mica, two ounces with the cast and craft, two ounces with the black mix all, and then one ounce of the silver, because this silver tends to take over. And I don't know if that's why the other coasters went um, more to the gray side, because I had the copper and I had this in there too. So we'll see. So I'm only doing one ounce of the silver and then I've got um, five ounces of clear. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've already got everything divided up so I just need to measure it out and mix it up here. And if you don't want to watch me do this part, feel free to fast forward. I know not everybody likes to watch the mixing, <laughs> but if you wanna see how much I'm putting in. So I'm just doing one heaping spoonful of the black. And then with the cast and craft, um, I want this to be opaque, so I'm gonna do 15 drops in here. This is pretty thick, it's kind of hard to squeeze out. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, then the mix all, I want this to be opaque as well. I'm gonna start with 10 drops. If I need to add more, I'll come back and add more. And then the silver. So I'm not gonna put as big of a scoop as I did with the black because I've only got one ounce of resin over here. So I'm just gonna do about, try to do about half as much in this one. Okay, let's get my little sticks here. You gotta be careful when you mix mica because you end up with powder going everywhere. <laughs> so this is the first time I'm using this black mica. Um, this came in a sample set from eye candy and it was the blackest looking one. There were three blacks in the set and the other two looked like, mm, I mean, they were black, but they looked like they had maybe some, just a hint of silver in them. And I just really just want black straight up black mica. So as I'm mixing this, this does have just a bit of a sheen to it, which is nice, but it's definitely a nice dark black. So I'll make sure I'm getting that mixed up really well. If you don't mix your mica in really, really good, you end up with little chunks of it that uh, they sink to the bottom of the mold. And the, in this case, the bottom of the mold is actually gonna be the top of the coaster. So 
I'm gonna try and avoid that. So I wanna make sure I get this mixed really well. Okay. And I try to mix my micas first because if there is any mica that's not mixed in, I can always mix a second time before I pour, but it gives it a chance to kind of sit. And sometimes loose mica will float up to the top. Um, so I like to mix the micas first. The silver is beautiful. This looks like liquid metal. And just scraping the sides and the bottom really good. Yeah, that's nice and opaque. I'm not gonna add any more. Perfect, all right, and then the white. All the white sank to the bottom. <laughs> white is usually the heaviest color, the heaviest pigment. So it's kind of funny when you put it into your resin, it just sinks. Whereas with the other colors, they tend to float. They might sink after a while, but they definitely don't sink as fast. But the lighter the color, the more white it has in it, so the heavier it's gonna be. That's a nice opaque white. All right, get this out of the way. I put my little mess here. Okay, so I'm gonna pour them in two uh, two circuits of color, I guess. I don't know what to call it. Um, but I'm gonna start with the clear. I'm gonna do the black mica, the white, the black. Um, tint. Nope. Yes, this way. Black mica, silver mica, black mixol, white cast and craft. And then this will be gone because I'm only going to do one layer of this because I don't want it to take over. So then I'll come back after I pour this and then I'm going to do this black, black, silver, black, white, yeah, and then black, this black, then white again, and then this black, and then more clear. I know that sounds confusing. I'm confusing myself. I apologize. <laughs> I thought I had a plan. <clears throat> Let's get the bubbles out of these real quick. And I see little fuzzies in here. Just got another set of these round molds. I really like them. It's a nice big, it's a five inch coaster mold. So it's pretty big. Got some other round ones that are smaller than this that are nice too, but um, I'm putting a decal on these. These are gonna end up being a trophy for a horse show for the National Association of Western Dressage. So I have their logo that I'm going to be putting on them. So I wanted them a little bit bigger. All right, so I'm going to just move these out of my way so I don't knock them over. Let's start with the clear. So starting with clear or a transparent color. It doesn't have to be clear, but it has to be transparent. That's how you get the crackle effect. So always, if you're doing this design, always start with a transparent color or clear so I'm just I'm trying to put 
about a half ounce in here. I don't want to overdo it. And I want to leave enough that I can come back at the end and put some more clear in to push all the colors out. So I should have about two and a half ounces left and I have three ounces. So I'm just going to add a smidge more to these last two. Looks like they're not quite as, don't have quite as much clear. Let's see what we got. Two and a half on the nose, perfect. All right, so that's for the next layer. Then we're doing the black mica. And this has to let go um, for two layers, so I only want to use half of it. And I'm trying to pour in the center. Didn't quite use half. end up with some on my hands all right then I'm doing this silver so now this I want to use all of this silver up Now I'm wondering if I should have done this the white and saved the silver for the last <laughs> layer. I don't know, I'm always second guessing what order I'm putting these colors in. <laughs> I don't know if the pouring order really affects the outcome. I should I should do a test. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do a test coming up pretty soon here with uh, using all the same colors, but pouring them in a different order, because I'm really curious to see how much that matters. Because I put so much thought into the order, and maybe I'm just wasting my time with that. <laughs> Then the mix all black. These mix all tints are really, really nice. And again, I'm just using about half of what's in this cup, this first go round. And the white. Mm. 
I'm using half of this as well. Okay, I'm just gonna hit it with the heat gun. Starting to get some really interesting effects from the silver and the white. Um, let me see if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. Let me bring you down real quick. Sorry for that. But uh, the silver's like popping through where some of the bubbles were rising up. And then the white, same thing is happening where the bubbles from below were popping um, you're getting some of that black showing through. It's kind of a cool, cool effect. Let me try and get this back on the tripod. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to do the black mix all. Just gonna use it all up now. All right, and then the rest of the white. Oh, you can see at the bottom here, I didn't mix the white in all the way. You probably can't see it, but there's some little streaks where the white is a little bit see-through. And then areas where it's more opaque. So I did not mix this white as thoroughly as I should have. I don't think it's going to make a difference, though. of the black mica and then the clear so these are really easy to do and I think they're a ton of fun because you can always try different color combinations and see how they blend it's always so fun to get those crackles demolding this is like <laughs> Christmas
Okay, and then the clear to finish it off. This is always my favorite part because you pour this in and the colors just spread out and everything starts to blend. All right, now I'm just gonna give them a second to settle. And then I just wanna check the depths. So I want them all about the same thickness. It looks like this one needs a little more. These two are pretty full. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, pour. So um, I'll come back in about a half hour or so and show you what they're looking like because they're gonna move a lot from where they are now i'll bring you down in a second for a close-up but um they're gonna move quite a bit as all these rings are gonna close in I'll just heat gun these i'm not trying to move the resin around with the heat gun i'm just getting the bubbles And I'll also, um, like I said, I'll come back in about a half hour and show you how these have changed. Just love that crackling, bubbling look that's going on in the black in the middle there. It's so cool. Yeah, these rings will close up. So there's magic happening on the top and the underside of these. Um, but yeah, so I'll be back in about a half hour, show you where they're at. Okay guys, it's been about a half hour or so, and you can just see how far they've closed up. That silver is really floating on the top. You can kind of see down in the center there, where it's, uh, you can see a little bit of the white kind of crackling in there. But yeah, they're closing up. I think that's probably about as far as they'll go. It's kind of cool that they didn't um, close in a circle. They've got <laughs> almost like a, I don't even know what that is. It's not like a snowflake with that zigzag edges. <laughs> it's interesting. I've never seen that happen before. But yeah, so that's where we're at. So um, I will see you guys in the morning when I unmold these. Good morning. Okay, we are back. Everything is nice and cured. You can see how they closed up. I love this little squiggle design. So let's see what they look like. So I'm hoping that they're more black than anything else. If not, I'll just redo them and not use <laughs> silver or white. All right. Ooh, lots of silver. Okay. So I I was worried about the silver taking over, and it did. Well, I'm guessing they're all going to be the same. It's still really cool, though. I don't hate it. It's just not what I was going for. Still has a really nice crackle to it. Ooh, this cool black edge. Almost looks really cloudy on the edge. I don't know how well you can see that, but the edges are really neat. Yeah, it's super cool looking. I really love how it looks. 
So I'm definitely gonna try it again, and this time, the next time I will skip the silver, because I don't want the silver in there. I love that um, cloudy edge, it's neat. All right, so there you go, that's how they finished up. Um, so as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you found this enjoyable or useful, I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel and click the little bell icon so you get notifications whenever I put new videos together. So take care and I will see you guys next time.